in the greatest visible crime against humanity the planet has ever seen. Let's look at each of these theories in turn. One of the first theories to appear by disinformation artists was that chemtrails were here to help us from the damaging effects of the sun's rays. At first blush, this appears to be plausible, but it does not explain the well-documented sprayings of aircraft mainly over large population centers, while ignoring obvious hot spots like barren deserts that might deserve such constant daily spray. This explanation also doesn't cover the desiccated red blood cells loaded with harmful pathogens. This theory was further weakened when it was discovered that much of the spraying happens to occur at night under the cover of darkness. Clearly, protection from the sun's rays is simply misinformation dangled to those who are chemtrail aware so that they would go back to sleep. Another lie foisted upon chemtrail researchers is the oft-told pattern of global warming. The idea presented is that the globe is overheating and that chemtrails are the answer, causing a decrease in temperature. This hopeless fib is easily destroyed by the following facts. Chemtrails are sprayed at night when the sun is beyond the horizon. The chemical makeup of chemtrails belies this in other theories. What do anthrax, spores, and lupus have to do with deflecting heat from the planet? If saving the planet from global warming were the actual goal of chemtrails, why hasn't the government come forward to use this as a publicity coup? They could certainly use some good press, and who isn't for saving the planet? Yet another idea presented is that our and other countries have gone over the edge and are playing God with the weather. Although there is a good indication that there might be aspects of the chemtrail program that lend itself to weather modification, it still does not fit all the facts. In fact, if changing the weather via chemtrails were the answer, why the secrecy, the lies, the cost which must run annually into the billions of dollars worldwide? Why then would the government feel it necessary to add harmful desiccated red blood cells to the mix? Cloud seeding has been successfully demonstrating using silver iodide particles since the 1950s. If changing the weather were the reason, why are there no harmless silver particles showing up in the lab test and in the resonant imaging? Again, this appears to be yet another lie unleashed upon chemtrail researchers to get them thinking and looking the other way. The last theory is so heinous in conception and execution that we dare not mention it except for the bizarre reality that it fits all the known facts regarding chemtrails. Let's look at those facts now. Fortunately, we have some four years of intense study into the problem of chemtrails and the following facts are not disputed. For reasons that will shortly become apparent, Given the data collected, we know the following. Fact. Chemtrails are loaded with pathogens deadly to the human organism. Fact. Chemtrails are definitely aimed at the major population centers, though even the backcountry of America, Australia, and other areas of Europe receive chemtrails, certainly not with the intensity and frequency of, say, Los Angeles or New York. Fact. Much of the spraying occurs at night. Fact, chemtrails contain various heavy metals such as titanium, aluminum, barium salts, and other toxic metals. Fact, most of the spraying is carried out by NATO air forces in their respective countries. What can we deduce from these facts? Very little. Some say that the presence of pathogens in chemtrails might be some kind of mass inoculation. Health professionals dispute this view by revealing that 
the fact that an overburdened immune system constantly fighting multiple infection vectors coupled with dozens of varying types of harmful viruses and bacteria causes the immune system to actually become less effective making it over the long term unable to fight off even the most common of infections colds and flus this perception fits with the experiences we have all been feeling over the last few years listlessness depression a weakened health system aching joints reaction to airborne particles and so on the theory of mass immunization also disputed by microbiologists who say that you cannot vaccinate against bioterrorism as there are far too many possible millions of potential strains and variants that can be quickly made up making vaccination moot now known as the Gulf War. Archival satellite images of the period clearly show a dedicated spray program against Iraqi soldiers who have reported the same symptoms then as many Americans are now reporting. Dizziness, allergic reactions never before experienced, shortness of breath, a lethargic depleted feeling of hopelessness, as can be seen in the two pictures shown here, whatever was aimed at the soldiers of Iraq in 1991 is currently being aimed right now at millions of people each and every day across the globe. Filmmakers have captured without realizing it countless examples of aerial spraying. The following films indicate a massive multi-billion dollar program. In fact, even print art put out in magazines have chemtrails in them. The video game Pool Borders 2000 has chemtrails in their background. Researchers have gone to great lengths to contact dozens of senators and congresspersons, as well as the military, to no avail. In addition to seeking out answers from our elected leaders, which have